Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to our Godot platformer series, Godot 3 platformer series, part six. In this video, it's gonna be a shorter video. I'm going to be showing you guys how to fix that small issue with the kind of the tearing in the tiles. And then we're also going to be doing the actual parallax background, um, which was actually submitted uh, as a comment from Michelle M. So we're going to be doing this as well. It was in the previous video. Maybe you've already done it. If you have, that's okay. Um, but I'll show how to do it in this video as well. So thank you for submitting that comment and let's get started. So the first thing that you guys may have noticed is with our camera movement, we have um, every once in a while, and sometimes it can be hard to trigger this, there will be a tearing in the tiles. Uh, so when we move, and it's because I've got the camera following exactly, it's actually pretty subtle. Um, if we put, if we come to the player here and click this little icon, we can see our player scene. And if we come into our camera and then we check smoothing as on, you'll see it, it'll be a little bit easier to see this kind of tearing in the tiles because the camera will be smoothing so you can see that tearing a little bit more easily. And some people like the smoothing, some people don't because it causes a little bit of a jitter on the character and stuff. But yeah, you can see that tearing in the tile. So let's talk about how to fix that real fast. So I'm gonna turn off smoothing because I prefer with this type of game not to have the smoothing on with the camera. We're gonna come into our scene, or let's see, not scene actually anymore. We're gonna come into project, project settings, and then up here, when we have quality, there's a 2D option here called Use Pixel Snap. And so we want to turn this on. So we're going to check that on, press close. Now when we run the game, even with smoothing enabled, I'll enable it again just to show here real quick. There will still be a little bit of jitter on our character because the camera is moving at exact pixel. Uh, points and the character uh, is not exactly because the character is the movement could be sub pixel for our character but you can see we no longer have that tearing on the tiles and that's because our camera is always aligned exactly on the pixel grid so at least that's my understanding of how that works so you can see that has fixed it I'm gonna turn off camera smoothing again I think it would be possible to write your own camera movement code that would help prevent some of the jittering for the player, or maybe it's the player movement code. I'm not sure, but that's going to be a little advanced for this. So if you don't mind the slight jitter, you can leave smoothing on. If the jitter bothers you, just turn off smoothing and have your camera snap with the player immediately. That, that works fine too, and I think it looks pretty good. Okay, so let's do the parallax background. So what we're going to need to do is inside of our player here, we're going to need to add a new node to our parallax background. And we're just going to be adding the, um, the parallax layer node. So type parallax. Here we go, parallax layer. And make your sky a child of the parallax layer. Then come into your sky and we're going to set the centered, make sure your centered is disabled so you don't have centered on. And if we come to, why do we have some sort of an offset here? What's going on? Does our parallax background have an offset? We've got, it seems like this point right here should be at the player's origin. Oh, we do. We do have an offset. Here it is. Okay. Set that to zero. There. So it should look like this. Then what you're going to do is go to your parallax layer and inside motion, you're going to set mirroring. Now this tells it when it should mirror, like when it should uh, basically how far over and how far down it should go for recreating this and tiling it infinitely in any direction is my current understanding. So with this sprite, it's 640 pixels by 640 pixels. And you can see it will show that 
it will reflect that here in the editor a little bit. Then you need to change your scale. The scale here is basically the scale at which the background follows the player. So let's say the player moves 10 pixels. Do we move 10 pixels as well or do we move half that? Which would be if we set our scale here to 0 0.5 then we would move half that. So uh, I'm just going to set this to 1 and 1. That's what Michelle M suggested. So we'll hit 1 and 1 right there and then we can press play. And now the background should follow with, I'm guessing this is a 10% scale to follow the player. And there you go, we've got a nice parallax background and we no longer have that slight jitter with the uh, tiles. Now, I do want to use this series to introduce a few more concepts. Uh, some of the stuff I'm thinking, I'm not 100% sure that I'll do all of this. I do want to teach about setters and getters. I'll potentially talk about uh, singleton auto-loaded nodes or data like scripts. They're nodes too, actually. You just don't create a node for them. So yeah, I do kind of want to talk about that because that's one of the ways that you can carry information from one scene to the next. And I think... I would, so setters and getters, auto-loaded singleton nodes, and then maybe signals. I would like to talk about those things because they're very unique to Godot and I think they're important things to learn about when you're working on your games. I don't know how in-depth I'm going to go with this series, how much more. I, I'd really like to start talking about some more advanced topics that are kind of not specific to any one kind of game, uh, whether that's like Di dialogue stuff potentially with maybe you know different options like that you can choose in the dialogue so one character asks you a question you can respond with different options stuff like that that I'm thinking about uh, so we'll just kind of see what I end up doing but I do plan on doing some more Godot content whether or not it's with this series so thank you guys so much for watching this video I hope you liked it please give it a thumbs up and I will talk to you guys later